Okay, and we are live right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is Arkanoi and the Doctor episode of, what was it, episode 7, I think it was, of yeah, our recap. Episode 7. Yep, sweet Eid. Yes, it is. Yep, everything is going good, and um, how are you How are you doing this um, on this uh, Monday evening there, man? I'm doing okay. That's good. That's good to hear. Of course, you know. Tomorrow night's going to be a election. We're going to be talking about that a little bit there after our recap and preview of what we um, had last week and what we've got coming on this week here. You know, I already just uploaded a video at the nearby mall, you know, just asking everybody to fucking keep it s civil. You know, if Trump wins, we don't need to uh, see anybody idiots out there on the road, hand in hand, blocking traffic pull on some sort of a demonstration or something or these young kids out there saying that I got something to say I'm going to start a revolution I'm like motherfucker you could even start a lawnmower for crying out loud let alone change a tire you know so so definitely we're going to be probably be discussing that probably on I should probably uh, give uh, Casey as raw uh, a little uh, notice to see the uh, let him know that we're live and see if he wants to come on there. Yeah, just send him a little note. We'll see what happens. Okay, well, I'll do that right now. So, um, this coming tomorrow night, you know, we have, of course, you know, we'll our, continue with the stones. Yep, and uh, possibly uh, Thursday night we'll be uh, taking a look at um, the Who and their lengthy career there. Or the Kinks. Yeah, the Kings sort of cool. We got a lot of British bands to cover there, believe it or not. You know, so uh, yeah, let's let's think about the Kinks then and the Who on next week because the Who are probably going to take two. The Kinks probably one. Yeah, I'm thinking that. So you want to do the Kinks first and then the Who later on? Yeah, because I think the Kinks can be covered in one. Well, yeah, we don't. Yeah, we you know, interesting because we uh, hardly hear about the Kinks that much. You know, believe it or not. You know, we, we, because they haven't been around in how many years now. I know uh, just Ray Davies is by himself. You know, he has yet to release any solo work. I think his brother Dave, his uh, co, co guitarist, had a stroke a long time, a long time ago. And I guess, um, I don't know if he's able to play uh, or not. Who knows? Of course, the Who are down to two people. Yeah, no, it's true. It's Townsend and Daltrey. John Nuntils is dead. You know, Keith Moon has been dead. You know, definitely when we discuss who we got to talk about Keith Moon and the possibility that he may have been autistic. Yeah. Because and then John, John Entwood, the whistle being an underappreciated bass player. Was I know. It's like good. he was one. He was a badass. I mean, like, he had those, he had a long step of cool-looking bass guitars when you think about it there. Yeah. That explains. then, go ahead. And then on Wednesday... We're going to continue with the Twilight Zone because we didn't get very far with it. Yeah, that's true. So we'll have to start up on that one again. And Friday, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do for a movie then. I've got several ideas because mm -hmm. Friday is actually my birthday. Um, oh. Did you get a chance to see that Manitou that I told you about? Uh, no, I'm sorry. We've been so busy with a lot of crazy shit up there, but I definitely got a... Thank you for reminding me about it because, you know, so much shit has been going around on the house area, you know, a lot of stuff coming in, a lot of things to take care of here and there and such and such. Well, we'll tentatively plan the, the Manitou, but if you don't see it, uh, let's see, what's another good choice? I haven't seen Heaven's Gate yet, and I doubt I'll see it by Friday. Um, mm. Of course, oh, yeah. I hadn't seen Sheena when we talked about that, so... I could talk. Heaven's Gate's the alternate. Let's just oh. do that. No, oh, we we should do that on Friday. Because hmm? I can read up on it if I can't get. To oh, it. I did some research on it, and man, there that. was a there was a lot of things that um went on during the making of this movie here. Barely of one of them was a pretty a serious um sub here. Um, basically, there was a few animals that were abused during the making of that movie. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be the alternate if you don't get to Manitou. Okay. Because you need to see that one. Definitely. I will. And I thought about, well, if we have a, we don't really have a topic for tonight, but some things that I needed to point out on the recap. Okay, definitely. Uh, let's see. Last week we did... Uh, 
British Invasion on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and we did the Stones on Thursday. Yep. We started the Twilight Zone on Wednesday, and on Friday we covered Ray Harryhausen. Yes, we did. Uh, I'd have to look it up to see for sure, but a group we didn't mention during the British Invasion was the Walker Brothers. I believe they were British, and they had two pretty big hits. Mm. Uh, Make it easy on yourself, and the sun ain't going to shine anymore. Oh wow, those are two pretty big hits. Um, I think. Um, let me look it up here. Um, the Walker Brothers. But I believe they were British, and I could be mistaken. Okay, Walker Brothers pop group here. Let's see what we got here. Oh, uh, some. Yes. Now I gotta clean this damn computer out because it drives me nuts. This often says, um, let's see, it was the Walker Brothers, they were American pop group in the nineteen sixties. Okay. okay. And seventies. Well, no wonder we didn't mention them. Uh, that's true, yeah. Now that's why it wasn't on the list of British bands on that uh, one particular episode there. Uh another group that actually wasn't British but they were Australian, besides the Bee Gees. Mm-hmm was a group called the Easy Beats. Oh, I've heard of that they, song, yeah. Friday on My Mind. Yeah, big hit with Friday on My Mind. But like I said, they were Australian, which for a long time I thought they were British. Well, here's a well-known yeah. fact. You may not, you may know this, and for those who don't know, uh, two of the members, George Young and Henry Vonda, they would later uh, be the producers for the early ACDC albums. They're like High Voltage, Powerage, and um, Let There Be Rock. And also, uh, they had a project of their own in around 1979 called Flash and a Pan. There was a song called Hey St. Peter, which was a big hit on the uh, rock radio around that year there. And something else that I've discovered uh, while I was browsing through some of my collection, mm -hmm. uh, Cheap Trick actually had an album where they did the whole Sgt. Pepper live. Mm, wow, that's something there. Which, uh, yeah, and I listened to it. It's impressive. They did a good job. Well, by the way, here's something else. Um, Len, on John Lennon's uh, sessions for the Double Fantasy album, apparently Bun E. Carlos, a drummer, and their guitarist Rick Nielsen, they were a, they contributed some guitar and drum work on some of the sessions for that album. Uh, basically, they were probably for the uh, demos there, for what I understand. I think some of those uh, demos um, stuff were finally released and on some sort of a reissue a CD of uh, Double Fantasy many years back. Wow. Yeah. So to get that, and this was uh, like I said, the demos before uh, they decided to get the band that they got uh, for the actual album recording, which included uh, Tony Levin, who later joined the uh, King Crimson after this sessions there. Well, oh, and when we talked about Manfred Mann, there were actually three songs we didn't mention that I think cover. are worth mentioning. Ah, uh, well, they did a cover of Watermelon Man, which was actually really nice. Because mm. I remember and there was a no, because I remember there was a Watermelon Man I heard about, which was in band class at one point. I don't know if that was the same one there. Well, I think Herbie Hancock had an aver a version of it, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And actually, I don't know who the original was, mm -hmm. but uh, that, that's a pretty neat little song. And they did another one called One in the Middle, which was basically kind of a, they introduced you to the band. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a pretty decent song. And then another one was If You Gotta Go, which was for that period of time, pretty risque. Wow. But that's a nice little song too. And I guess that this was one of those um one of those explicit type of songs there, I guess it was. Uh it was more Not, suggestive than anything else. I see. Something like um I think we're alone now. By Tommy James yeah, and the Shondells. Pretty, pretty something like, like that. that, yeah. Or I Light My Fire, which I remember um Grace Slick said it was a very explicit song during that period of time. Yeah, uh, they had to, well, if you listen to Paul, Peter, Paul, and Mary on the It's Only Rock and Roll, they do mention that the lyrics are hidden in some cases. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I don't recall what the exact line is, mm-hmm. but it's basically about how rock and roll. Well, actually, that's on I dig. Yeah, I dig rock and roll music. They're talking about. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to say it, so they read. You have to read it between the lines or something like that. And uh, there's a lot of that going on. People just don't realize how much. All right. Because now everything is absolutely explicit, and there's no hidden meaning. It's out there. Just out there. Whereas sure. um, it was kind of funny. It was it's when she had mentioned that I remember the um, the song "Saving All My Love for You" by Whitney Houston. Yeah. Which is about adultery, by the way. You know, a guy cheating on another woman behind his family's back. You have your family, and they need you there. Ah, Super Roll Hunter. I contacted to see if you wanted to participate. Um, give us a few minutes, Super Roll Hunter. We have to add. Uh, fuck it. Let me add him, and I'll add you back, Ark. Okay? Okay. Let's go over here. Super Roll Hunter. What the shit, man? Hmm. I don't know what the fuck happened, man. I gotta resume. Okay, I'll re- get back on the call uh, here. There you there. are. Yeah. Okay, a couple of things I was gonna ask you. If we don't do a whole show on, we might discuss a little bit in these shows. All right. One of them was what you might call debut albums that created a stir or had a whole large impact or just really set the tone for the group or something like that Uh I got some examples of that another one I'd like to do sometime is uh, rare songs that that you never hear about Mm -hmm. or good songs Mm -hmm. yes I know and then, of course, one hit wonders. They're yeah. they're kind of fun to talk about. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, Silver Roll Hunter, Minnesota Silver Roll Hunter, finally I uh, got you in, dude. Yeah, sorry about that. I just got your uh, message on Skype. Yeah. So, so how's everything going on? Everything going smooth there, or anything? Yeah, no riots or nothing yet. I don't think. <laughs> no, ri- no riots. Oh. All right. No. So is um. If Trump wins tomorrow, is uh, everybody going to be ready for the uh, whining, the windbags out there? Who's going to be whining, scoffing, pitching, pissing, moaning? Oh, I hope they win. I hope he wins. I hope so too, man. Yeah, I really do because you know, like I said, we don't need. Uh, we're going strong for four years, and we don't need to go back. Yeah, that's true. And but and plus, I can imagine all the uh, Trump haters on my Facebook uh, friend list. Who are going to be bitching, pissing, moaning, and screaming their heads off? You know, blah, 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 blah. you know. So, um, so I have to wait and see. You know, and a lot of the polls that um, I've seen so far, Trump is leading over, way over Biden. And this was on Twitter, by the way. Huh? Yeah. H- heck of a deal. I know. Interesting. I think so. So, um. I tried to get Casey's Raw on the uh, the call here as well, but he's going to be uh, with Dave Rose later on tonight, I guess. So they're going to be doing a show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you uh, have you talked to uh, Dave Rose uh, since uh, that one Thursday night? Uh no, I haven't. Nah, I haven't talked to him either. I, you know, I got to be honest. That, that even though I had to laugh when you know, when you admit when you mocked him the way you did, but I, 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 I gotta set that. I gotta find me some uh, mega fast metal thrash tune to put right that next to it as the lyrics there. It'll See go. how they. <laughs> yeah, I gotta do that, man. <laughs> I gotta do that, man. I've been so tempted to find one. Probably later on when I get off the call here. When the show ends, we'll definitely have to do that there. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for inviting me on. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, I figured. Um, I figured I'd try to get you and uh, Vikings on, but um, he was too busy, so he con- told me to contact you to see if you wanted to come on the program there. Yeah, but going back to Dave Rose, I was not well, too happy the way he did that, man. None of us were, to be honest with you. You know, so um, I'm just gonna keep my keep my. Uh, did you guys leave? 
No, no I'm still... I didn't. I he's like breaking up. I was. Oh, okay. All of a sudden, it just went. Huh. My voice broke up for some reason. I don't know. Uh, how could that be? Yeah, it was like Skype uh, interference or something. Oh, and I know your voice kind of broke up there for a couple of seconds there, a little bit there, because I heard a, huh. one of those uh, reverbs. One of the things that I thought might be interesting is, well, I was telling uh, Dr. Earl, was uh, de massive debut albums that, that just really quite created a stir when they de debuted. Uh, I have several examples. Mm-hmm. Of course, obviously, the first Beatles album. The first Boston album as well. Quite a, oh, the first Boston album was massive. Um, of course. Um, and then Led Zeppelin's first album. Black Sabbath's first album. Yeah, but they were albums that when they debuted, everybody said, boy, this is something special. Yeah. And those were good examples of all of those. Uh yeah, everybody that heard the Boston album, there's not a song on the Boston album that doesn't get played. That's Every true. single song on that album gets played somewhere. Yeah, a lot yeah. of time, a lot of times. But the one the problem is they always focus on the for opening track more than the feeling. I mean, the, but, yeah. but a lot of ways that track has um, been uh, so overplayed on con commercial radios, but they often forget about four plays last long time or rock and roll band or. Um, Smoking and of course. Well, the hello. The fun thing with Boston is trying to classify them. Mm -hmm. Some people call them prog. Some people call them stadium rock. I think they're kind of in between the two. Well, because uh, foreplay long time is definitely a prog song. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it has all. I I mentioned. Yeah, I used to um get high in the eighties. I used to get high in the 80s and 90s while uh, listening to Boston all the time. Wow. <laughs> That's something there. And be, you know what? I remember uh, Dave Rose and JB, um, when I joined it on that one episode of Monetize, this, they were having a discussion about was the band Boston a prog or a regular rock band. And um, I kind of like said best they were an American rock band. They're still together, by the way. It's just Tom Schultz, guitarist and engineer and producer at the only original member now. But uh, the problem is, you know, they are not really a problem. They did involve some um, prog rock elements into their music, which not just... Um, the four... elements were there. Yeah. But uh, they weren't really a total prog band. No. But the elements were there for it. And they did have some prog. I mean, like I said, Four Play Long Time is definitely a prog song. Absolutely, man. Because you know, and plus we cannot forget the journey from the second record before it, uh, <clears throat> before it can went into the uh, third track. There, I think it was "Don't Be Afraid." I think it was. I forgot. Uh, it could be, yeah. Uh, but Boston was one of those kind of bands. They had elements of prog, but they weren't a total prog band, mm. or not in my opinion, anyway. I see. Yeah. And another good debut album, like I mentioned, was the Led Zeppelin album. I can remember when that first came out, I was working in the Gibsons, which is Kmart before Kmart. Uh, it, it was a discount store in Texas. Oh, yeah. But uh, anyway, we had a shipment of 8-tracks come in, and I was looking through them, and I saw that one, and I go, this looks interesting. Stuck it in there, and the first song I hear is Good Times, Bad Times, and I'm going like, Holy cow, I love this. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this is cool. And you know, listen to that whole thing, and that, I mean, and it, it hit big. That, that, that album was super played. And it's, it's basically a lot of people call that some of the beginnings of heavy metal. Mm -hmm. And I can see that. I can see a lot of metal in that song, in, in what they were doing. I think definitely some of the metal groups definitely bought it note and went with that uh, it is about half the songs or more are definitely metal communication breakdown uh, it's hard to call day uh, not day to confuse babe I'm going to leave you that's hard to call that a metal song but I guess it's possible yeah so Either was way. Uh, Stairways of Heaven on the first 
album? No, no that was the fourth, the so untitled fourth one. one. The fourth one. Okay. Yeah, I used to listen to a lot of Led Zeppelin when I was younger. I, I, I just had a question. You know, I don't know if it's true or not, but like in, you know, when you go to uh, guitar stores and stuff, they say you can't play uh, Highway to or uh, Stairway, Stairway to, to Heaven. Heaven. Yeah. Well, and that why was the joke that? in Lane's World. Oh, okay. That's that was why. the joke in Lane's World because and I saw a everybody couple... tries to play that song. I tried to, I, I know somebody, I'm there, last time I was in a guitar store, the, one of the songs I tried to, pl- I was playing was Thieves by Ministry, and that kind of surprised the uh, guy behind the counter, because they usually told me they usually play either Guns N' Roses and stuff like that, or Zeppelin. Yeah, everybody likes to practice with those songs for some reason. I know, because, I know, for some reason, because uh, those songs usually have, uh, that's when they show the power of those songs, you know, the best to find out if the if the guitar is just as powerful as the songs. The, the you get the idea there. I'm getting tongue tied there. Yeah. Well, sometimes when I went in, I'd always try to do some a little unusual. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the ones I used to do is Starship Trooper by Yes. Mm-hmm. The third part of that song where he does the the D the D stuff up and down the bar. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been. I'm sorry, I don't mean to jump on you guys. It's okay. It's oh, okay. It's okay. Dude. Um, I I noticed since I've been getting older, I've been loving jazz more. You know, like the blues. You know, oh, Albert yeah. King and BB King and. Uh, yeah, I just love listening to that. Oh man, I there was a yeah, there was this cool jazz station. He used to call itself Smooth Jazz around the uh, southeast Michigan area. I also would listen to that a lot of times. You know, there were a couple of times when I would uh, drive my car out to the um, to the uh, St. Clair Shores, the um, Troy area as well, around those regions in the like, summertime. Yeah, I liked uh, Chris Correa and uh, Weather Report. Those were good. Chick Correa, yeah. yeah. There was this one song. Of course, Miles t- Davis. Yeah. Has this fading been happening since I came on the call? Or? The fading of our voices? Not real, not real sure. I don't know. For some reason, I don't know what the hell is going on with my end. Uh, is your end okay there? Is there any lagging on there, uh, guys? Well, I hear you I hear you fading in and out. but uh, Yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Everything else is good. Oh. Yeah, I was just wondering if it was when I connected or or what. I know, but well, we weren't on long enough. To... Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't know. I what don't think point. we're on more than two minutes or so. No, uh, yeah, it's still kind of uh, early in. There he goes post. again. Oh. Yeah, I know. What the fuck? What the <laughs> fuck is going on? Well, here? we I'm were getting... kind of discussing jazz there. I hope you heard some of that. And I know my uh, my thumbnail on my screen there is lagging like hell. There. I was trying to think the other. I don't know why. I was trying doing. to think the other guy's name that played in Weather Report. I think is what Wayne Shorter. Wayne Shorter, right? and I think it's that Jocko Possumus. I uh, get that bass player that influenced the current bass player of Metallica. In fact, there was a documentary on him that was produced by Robert Turturro. Yeah, because uh, I know. <laughs> it's interesting they used to and play I just weather gotta on the that weather the stream, channel. And I just got to notice that the stream is down. Which just pisses me off over the simple fact that um, we're having all these damn issues here. Maybe it's that 1920s computer you're using. Oh, God. That that's a joke, by the way. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just... I actually mentioned mentioned I, that. I, I just put in uh, eight more uh, uh, gigs of uh, memory into my computer. Yeah, the more RAM you've got, the better off you are normally. Or, yeah, sorry, it's... ROM. Yeah, it's running a lot, a lot quicker now. Yeah, I think I have 16 in this computer. One of the computers. The other computer, the one I'm using now, I honestly don't know. But it's a relatively new laptop, so I'm sure it's working okay. 
Yeah, I got 16, and, and now I was running it with 8, and I got 16 now, and I think I can get up to 32 in there, I think. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Oh, no. So it's just they just get a little more expensive the more gigs you get, so. True. Yeah. So that's my plan is to get it up there sometime here. Yeah, and then it supposedly it'll run faster, cleaner, and all that good stuff. Yeah, and it doesn't pause, or if you have a lot of stuff on your OBS, it doesn't, uh, you know, stop or whatever, too. Yeah. Well, I don't have a lot of stuff on this little laptop, so uh, I run pretty clean, I guess, at this point. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, keep... I was going to say, I'm trying to leave a lot of stuff off this computer and put it all on the main one, because the main one I got, like, Oh, two terabytes of memory, and then I have a couple of external ones, one terabyte, and the other one's four. So I got all kinds of room for stuff on this computer. Yeah, I was going to say, I got um, a tower computer I use that has two terabyte memory. And um, yeah, I never, I mean, right. I had a laptop I was using, but it was so damn slow, you know. Right. I think we're yeah. back live now, just waiting for the um, screen to pop up there. Try this again. Yeah, because I'm not seeing you yet, but mine's a little slow for some reason. I'm picking you up. I don't get it, man. This is this is one of the things that pisses listen? me. What? Go ahead. I was going to ask uh, Silver Roll if he listened to any of the stuff we did last week. Ah, uh, I'm trying to remember what was it about. Well, we did Ray Harryhausen on Friday. He was a special. He had really cool monsters <clears throat> back in the day. And then uh, on t Thursday, we did Thursday. Wednesday, we did uh, Twilight Zone, about the first two seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of those iconic anthology type. Well, you know that. Yeah, I usually listen when I see it pop up because I have you, um, you know, the, the bell pushed in. Yeah. So usually when I see you go on, I watch your stuff, your guys' stuff, and um, um, sometimes it's like even when the bell's on, I don't get the the stuff that comes up. I never do for any of them that I have the bell pushed on, which is weird. Basically, I have to just check once in a while. Yeah, because I, I kind of watch it on my big screen TV, my smart TV, uh, YouTube on that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when I'm sitting watching TV, I, I I pretty much only watch YouTube and I got uh, Hulu and I got uh, Netflix and I don't got no cable, you know, and I just kind of, that's what I watch. Yeah, it, oh, it's funny to say this, but a lot of the old stuff is the only thing worth watching. Yeah, actually, I was just watching a, a Gilligan Island reunion back from like the 80, like 89 or something like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, neat. wow, because that's. I think the only one still alive is Don Wells, and I don't even know about her. Huh. I know, I know Gilligan and Skipper are dead. I know Tina Louise is dead. I know the... Come on. The rich the people are still dead. On. The rich couple? Yeah, I can't even think of their names. Um, I know. I think it was one of them was Virgin Samaritan uh, Fair to play them. I don't think it's hot right now. Oh no! Uh, it was uh, I can't think of his name. Jim Backus. I don't know why I'm Jim Backus. Jim, Jim Backus. Backus that's yeah, it. Jim Backus, who later uh, did uh, Mr. Magoo, the voice of that character. Yeah, and uh, Russell Johnson, the professor, dead. And like I said, I I haven't heard if Don Wells is still alive or not, but she was the last one. Oh well, wow! That's something. Bob Denver. I know he's dead now, as well. Oh yeah. Well, and here's the ultimate question. Ginger or Marianne? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people were into Ginger at that time, but then again, I would have to go with Marianne because she was more realistic, more down Marianne to earth. Marianne was the one I'd I'd go with. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. You know, the country girl. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was. She was something special on that show. She really was. What's funny is the first season, the theme. When they were introducing the character, you know, the Gilligan, the Skipper 2, the millionaire and his wife, mm -hmm. the movie star. The first season, it was And the Rest. 
and then oh, <laughs> second shit, and third really? season, they <laughs> they did the professor and Marianne. I always thought that was <laughs> did kind you of ever, funny. Did you guys ever see the cartoon version of that show, show there? And how about the original? <laughs> yeah, I did. yeah, I just seen it a couple of times myself, but it goes on Saturday morning, and I guess um, it had all the like they did with the Star Trek animated series. They had um, the original cast members uh, doing the voices. Except oh. possibly Tina Louise, because she wanted out of that show quick. Oh, wow. But uh, the reason they made the change in the theme was by Bob Denver's request, actually. Oh, wow. He said, you guys aren't doing the Professor and Marianne. You need to put them in the theme. And that's why they did it, because wow. of Bob Denver. It wasn't anything Russell Johnson or Don Wells were saying. Wow. Include everybody, Well, I just I can't guess. imagine. I just watched Everyone's Dead in it. That's kind of crazy. Wow. Including, yeah, and I've actually... Including Don actually Wells? There was a pilot for uh, that show. I'm sorry? What's up? I was going to say, there's actually a pilot for that show that had some different characters. I don't remember who all was different. I think, uh, uh, let's I think both uh, Gigi and Marianne were different. And possibly... The Millionaire's Wife, Natalie Schaefer. Oh, wow. I don't remember, but I do know they had at least two different characters. But they did, that was the pilot. And I've must, seen it a couple of times. Must have been a reboot because usually uh, networks have a tendency to do that. Was it on syndication? No, it was just one that they said, oh, by the way, here's the pilot. Mm -hmm. And they showed it to us. And it was the one they did before they got the cast. But it had different people in it. Oh, wow. I mean, if they redid that, like nowadays, I'd, I'd watch it. You know, if they had yeah. a whole new thing. But, you know, it'd be more diverse now. I'd probably have a rapper on it. You know what I mean? And Yeah, it probably wouldn't know. be as much fun to watch. But uh, that's the funny thing is if you told people that you watched that show, they kind of looked at you like you were nuts. And it was an interesting and fun show to watch. I really don't understand why people would uh, give you a hard time for watching that show. It's, yes. it's what you'd call a guilty pleasure, I guess. Yeah, simply. Which that's another thing. When we do a music episode, I want to do one on guilty TV. pleasures. TV, uh, this, yeah, absolutely. We got to do it because everybody has a guilty pleasure where it's um, a preference for a TV show, music, or an artist, or something like that, or. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned once before. You know, a lot of people will go go down on or get down on you for saying this, but I like me some Neil Diamond. Mm. I mean, I like the guy. I don't. He he did some absolutely killer songs. I yeah. like some of Abba's stuff. You know what my guilty pleasure was, always was, and probably will be, eighties R and B love ballads. Yeah, and I, I'm yeah, talk, me too. I'm talking about you know songs by um. Either Luther Vandross or a Freddie Jackson, a couple by the Gap Band, that song Yearning for Your Love. That was always a favorite of mine. I always, I always imagine there's some a couple sitting in their house with the lights off and a summer um, evening there. And I liked the Carpenters. I thought Karen Carpenter had a gorgeous voice. Yeah, she does. She, she still does to this day when you think about it. Uh, actually, she's been dead for like 15, 20 years. I know. It's like, and, and that, you know, what's kind of funny, you know, I think I mentioned this before. It took her death to make people aware about what anorexia was. Yeah. Because the yeah. back then, people didn't really know about this situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool, you know. If we could do like record, uh, you know, name this song or do you remember this song and then play the song off a record? Uh -huh. or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that could be interesting too. Yeah. I um, can name that tone, note, I can name that tune in five notes or whatever. Right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, because I think if you only play it for like nine or ten seconds, you don't get a copyright strike. Yeah, and. Generally, I'm sure it's true for Dr. Earl. Generally, I can recognize a song in that amount of time. Generally, yes. not always. Yeah. Yeah, because I got like 300 albums and I haven't played them for 20 years. Wow. They're just sitting. Yeah, it was, you know, sitting. 
Yeah. Well, I was telling Doctor Earl that I have three or four hundred thousand uh, MP3s. Wow! Damn. Wow. I, Damn. I collect the heck out of them. Damn. If I find them, I grab them. You could probably I mean, open up your own the MP3 store right there, man. Yeah, but I, I honestly I have stuff that I don't listen to or probably wouldn't listen to, but I just collected it and put it in my archive and go with that. Dude, there's stuff on the MP and mine. One of my MP3s I've been um, playing in a long time. There, I've been mostly I've been focusing on this uh, two or three songs. Or as of late, my personal choice. And I realized you know what? I have other pieces out there. I should play those. Yeah, well, the way I look at it, it's, it's kind of an experimentation thing. I see something that looks interesting, and I go, hey, I wonder what that sounds like. Yeah. And I'll play it, and sometimes I'll go, well, I'm not playing that again. Yeah. Or I'll go, hey, that's pretty good. What else have <laughs> I got? Right. You know, some I do that more than I do. I don't want to listen to it anymore. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Hundred of thousands. Wow, that's it. Wow. Wow. Cool. Well, I used to have till I had to get rid of them three thousand, almost four thousand albums. Wow, my all my albums are except for a couple of some that I was able to take with me are still. Um, I had to leave them behind it back in Mission because a lot of them were in the, my basement and some of them got moldy, got that little uh, basement smell to them. And it's like oh, yo, yeah. screw it. MP3 sort of thing now, you know, uh, iPads and such, and then. Um, so I had covered all my stuff, uh, all of my favorites, all my absolute dearest favorites, all onto my uh, couple of MP3s here. Now, as I mentioned, you know, the situation with my phone, with the uh, Google Play music, you know, uh, closing up there. So now we got to go to YouTube music and all that shit. I have to ask um, either my nephew or my sister if she knows anything about it because it just pisses me off that it would it won't even allow to. Um, transfer all the stuff from that that playlist onto this uh, YouTube shit they got here and I don't know if I have to pay for it you know, or whichever there but fuck that one of these days I'm going to have to find me find me a used up phone to see if I can um, get that going there and put all my um, music selections on there oh, yeah. well I'm not saying this out loud where anybody can hear it but uh if you can get hold of a portable hard drive, uh, I can, well, obviously I can dump you off quite a bit. <laughs> wow. Wow. Nice. Yeah, heck, I'll have to, uh, um, when I can afford to get one. I mean, I know they're not that expensive, but, you know, kind of times are tight right now. For... Yeah. Well, know, nobody's is, yeah. able to do much of anything right now let alone go out and the things. I know there are people going out, but you got to have that damn mask on your damn face there. <laughs> and by yeah, the way, and by the way, bother me all that much, but yeah, yeah, I have to say, you know, I think we all agree face the, the different kinds of face masks that are out there right now. You see them at Walmart, you see them at the nearby Myers, you see it at the grocery stores that has become one of the biggest fashion trends of 2020 yeah i've seen some that i thought were kind of interesting that i thought hey, you know what that'd be kind of neat yeah i mean what? i've seen some that have like animal faces yep that uh <laughs> you know, I thought, well that'd be kind of cool to walk in somewhere wearing a a cat face or whatever and have people go hey you know, when i cool. was when i was out and you know, when i was out and about and inside the mall getting a couple of things i had my darth vader face mask on You know which one I thought would be kind of cool, but I, you, you remember uh, Downey Jr. His, his talk show, Morton Downey Jr. Yeah, yeah, more Morton Downey. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Morton Downey Jr. Old loved time him. guy, he'd always smoke cigarettes. Yes, oh yes, I and he had him. a big smile, big teethy smile. Yes, have yeah, him on the guy. front of one of them. If people <laughs> rem if people remember him because he's been dead for about God knows how many years now. But you know it's interesting you should touch up on that because I heard about this guy. I wanted to check him out. He used to come on afternoons at one of the local stations, and um, if I wasn't able to check out the show, I had um, had my mom, and dad, or record it on the v on VCR and check it out when oh. I got home from work there. 
and he came up with some pretty good discussions. And that's when we first heard about Reverend Al Sharpton and the uh, Tawana Brawley case. Interesting. Yeah. And back then, Al, mm -hmm. Al Sharpton was way heavier than he what is than what he is now. He's like almost skin and bones. Oh, Reverend Al Sharpton. Correct. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. What we got here? The failure to communicate. Oh gosh, of course, <laughs> uh, that idiot there. I mean, he really made himself look like a fool. He was willing to go after the white cops, white man, and everything during that whole case. And turns out it was all apparently a hoax because the girl wanted to stay out late, but she feared a retaliation from her, from her over, uh, I don't know if the woman was abusive or overprotective, but she was a fascist or whatever it was. But apparently she came up with this um, idea that she have something N-word bitch on her uh, chest there, claiming that white cops had raped her. That caused a lot of disturbances um, within the New York Police Department and everybody else there. Viking? I mean, excuse me, Silverwell? I think he... Oh, go ahead. I'm... Okay. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was on the other side of the studio. I was um, doing right. something. Sorry about that. All right, so is the Vikings willing to come on and say hi for a couple minutes, or is he too busy? Um. Well, I know he's getting ready to do something. I can go check, see if he can come and say hi. Okay, we could do that, definitely. All right, hold on a second. All right. So, I guess, you know, so... Um, <laughs> This uh, Friday, there. Did you, you want to do us? Uh, you wanted to do that uh, movie you mentioned there, the Manitou, or uh... only if you see it. Okay, gotcha. Manitou. Okay, I gotta look it up on the. Uh, yeah, because that one, that one's a trip if you watch it. Hey, you're you're gonna sit there and go, what, what, what? It's it just it just go out off in weird places. All right. And, and the funny thing is, it's got. Tony Curtis in it. Okay. And there were a couple of other 19, pretty big names. I'm looking at it. Uh, it was a 1978 horror movie directed by William Girdler, Tony Curtis, Susan Strasberg. You know, I got to definitely yeah. check it out. Susan Strasberg. Yeah. Strasberg there. It, it had just, big people in it. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember who the Indian was. Uh, mm -hmm. don't want, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember his name. I originally thought it was Chief Dan George, and then I found out, no, it's not him. It's another guy. Oh, wow. I'm looking at it right now at the um, at the Google images of there. It looks pretty interesting. Um, did they have a midget uh, portraying that uh, particular character? I'm not real sure how they did that. Hmm. But essentially the premise is this lady goes in because she has something going on her back, and she doesn't know what it is. And... The doctors, Tony Curtis being one of them, uh -huh. uh, discover that it's alive wow. and growing on her back, and it turns out to be like it's an old Indian chief or something, or medicine man or something. I, I, I don't recall. And so they're trying to figure out how to get it off the lady and get it off her back and all that. Yeah. But like I said, I'm not going to describe You need to watch it. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully it's on the YouTube movies here. i got to check that out, possibly. Let's see if it's um, showing it on there. Because I definitely want to look it up there. And as you mentioned it, let's see. Trailer, trailer. Well, it fits, it fits the description. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, there. Dr. Brown. Yes. Yeah, he uh, he's already out of the house. Oh, okay there. So no problem. Sorry about that. Uh, no problem right. there. We'll definitely uh, uh, speak to him and we'll you catch guys. Him later. Yeah, probably later. On definitely on the Thursday there. Definitely for yep. sure. For true, sure, true, man. True. All right. So tell him we said hi and um, hopefully uh, the city of Minneapolis will be uh, safe uh, this tomorrow night for. Yeah, he came in here earlier when when your uh, screen, your stream was going down and let me know it was down, and then he he was getting ready to go. Yeah. All right, there. Mm -hmm. 
see right now it's a bunch of trailers you know actually that i actually have the full movie in a different sections of about 21 um, bits of there well it's like i said it's an interesting watch it's several have you ever seen a movie by the name of the manitou with tony curtis the manitou um I've seen, I, I mean, if I've seen parts of it, I probably have seen it because I watch a lot of. Um, oh, you would remember it if you saw it. It's yeah, I used to those. watch a lot of them old. I, I like Tony Curtis. Mm. Yeah, my favorite movie that he did was in that I can remember off the top of my head was Houdini. Oh, wow. yeah. that that was an excellent movie, and it gave you a lot of insight into Houdini. I mean, he was a strange bird. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was cool. I mean, in his own way. Heck yeah. Yeah, especially as what his upside down drowning in a tank bit. Yeah, yeah. Because that's theoretically, well, in the movie, that's what killed him. I don't know if that actually was it or what. And did it say, on what? I need this to be settled. What place, what venue did this happen in where, where he died? Because I was told many times it was the uh, at the Majestic Theater back in Detroit on Woodward Avenue that where he allegedly died. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure either. Harry Houdini. Let me look up there. Uh, what am I doing there? I'm still looking up the man. Yeah, in movie the movie there. he died from. Yeah, in the movie he died from the stunt, the upside down. What? I'm trying to remember who played the lead girl. Was it Doris Day? Oh, in the movie about his life there. Yeah. I knew not. Yeah, know. That, that was actually a pretty good movie. I enjoyed it. All right. Oh, I might have to watch it now again. It's been a long, 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 long time. Let me look up his um, notable escapes to mirror challenge. The suspended overboard box escape movie career. Uh, he had a movie career as well. He started showing films outside of it as outside of his part of his vaudeville act. You know, he presented a short film called Houdini defeats uh, Hank and Schmidt, which is uh, George Hank and Schmidt was a famous wrestler during that time. But the nature of the contest is unknown as the film is lost. No. Yeah, a lot of those small films like that. You know, if you if you're lucky enough to find them, you know, wow. Oh yeah. Because they're really hard to find. Yeah, it's kind of like when we were talking about Doctor Who. There's that one one batch of episodes that they have to replace with stills and uh, radio because the film itself is gone. Wow, how does that happen? Some idiot burns them. That's what happened there. Yeah. According to the biography here, uh, Harry Houdini hired H.P. Lovecraft and Lovecraft's friend C.M. Eddy Jr. to write an entire book about debunking religious miracles, which was a bit called The Cancer of Superstition. Um, Houdini had earlier asked Lovecraft to write an article about astrology in which he paid him $75, which is equipment today, is about $1,083 this year alone. Now, the article does not survive Lovecraft's delay, detailed synopsis for cancer does survive. Synopsis. As to three, what again? Synopsis. Synopsis. Yeah, thank you. Um, as do three chapters of the treasy written by Eddie Houdini's death derailed the plans, and as his widow did not wish to pursue the project even more. I'm looking at uh, where he died up here, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. He died of uh, some sort of a, um, what is it called? Um, parodi- Water ton- in the lungs. <laughs> no. No. Um, Peritontis, I think it's called there, secondary to a ruptured appendix. And um, around 11, I mean, excuse me, 1 p.m. October 31st, 1926. It was in a room 401 at Detroit's Grace Hospital. 
He was 52 years old. So he did de- die in Detroit there. And he died on Halloween. Yeah, I know. Wow. Wow. So he didn't die like they showed in the movie. Hmm. Well, well how did he? Um, sh- I guess. They showed him <laughs> trying to get out of that that uh, water trick he did. Yes. And uh, they got him out just in time for him to die. Wow. That's something. Yeah, I uh, you know. <coughs> Grace Hospital. I think I don't know if I no, I, I don't know if um I've ever been there, but I that must be. A, I wonder if the room that uh, he died in must be haunted or something like that. And you know what's kind of funny is that there have been so many attempts on television, many this person that person to get in contact with Harry Houdini through seances. Yeah, that was one of his things I remember in the movies. He'd go to seances mm. and uh, would debunk seances. Yeah, I guess what it was. Well, for I understand, um, while he was on a trip there, his uh, ma, and ma died. And uh, when he got back and got the news, he would spend many, many hours on by her gravesite there. Yeah. yeah. And in the movie too, um, uh, he did a trick where they dropped him in ice water with in a trunk. Wow. He tried to escape, but he missed the spot to come up in, and uh, he couldn't find his way. And then suddenly he said that he could he could hear his mother guiding him, and he found the way out. He was able to get out, and uh, found out that she died while he was under the water. Wow. Wow. That was, that's a trip there. You guys need to watch that movie. Oh, yeah, definitely. I was looking for an Amanda to um, well, a couple of minutes ago, but all they have is you know, selected trailers and a couple of scenes from it on YouTube. You know, and that's pretty much about it. I, I thought they had the movie in uh, 21 parts here, but it's mostly uh, the same thing, trailers and other shit. So only so far, we have to go by the selected scenes that they have on YouTube, you know. Because if you try, because mm. if you try to find, a, look for it on either Netflix or a Hulu or a Movies Twenty Four, or Twenty Five, there'll be like um, nothing, no no results there. I tried that with other couple movies uh, many times on those uh, things there, and they all uh, come up blank. Wow! Wow! Huh. All right. Echo so, deal. I know, so I'm going to have, probably have to um, keep trying, I guess, for now. Okay, just let me know kind of how it goes. Okay, well, so I'll keep on trying there. But until I know you until you still want to do it, I know, I know you mentioned uh, you still want, only want to do it if I've seen it there. You know. Well, I think you kind of need to see it. Mm-hmm. Uh I just... Uh, it's kind of tough to talk about a movie if you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. I yes. mean, I've done it, but, you know, I talked about Sheena and I'd never seen the movie. Oh. I like to, and on this, since you got me interested, I'm intriguing to check it out myself there. So, um, what do you, what are your suggestions for uh, Friday there? I already had my selection of the Heaven's Gate scenario. Because that was a crazy ass thing. That's one definitely one thing to talk about. There, apparently, what it was that it was went way over budget. There was so many uh, ver- many re-edits of that movie, and for I understand, the acting was terrible, and plus the uh, allegations of animal abuse that went on during the set there. Yeah, I all I have to do is sit down, and I can come up with a huge list because it's. I, I I like to watch, I guess for lack of a better term, bad movies. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they're fun to watch just because they are what they are. Right. But I know that uh, uh, we, we could talk about the Gamera series like we did Godzilla. Yeah, oh, Those yeah. Those are good. About the giant turtle that had rockets for feet or whatever. Oh, really? Have you never seen a Gamera movie? <laughs> Gamera? No, I didn't, you know. <clears throat> yeah, They're... me neither. <laughs> oh, I mean, it, it's a giant turtle, and you're thinking to yourself, well, gee, I could get away from that. 
but somehow he has rockets in his feet. Huh. And it's like, what? <laughs> and, and I he can't goes get up. away. <laughs> Bobby, yeah. is this a space age version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here? Oh no, these these came out about uh, Godzilla time. Oh gosh, the sixties, seventies. But uh, in fact, I think that the first one's black and white. But uh, if you ever watched Mystery Science Theater, the camera was a favorite of theirs. They did about four of his shows. This his tells show. you how old I am. I, when I was a kid, I had a Godzilla. Um, model that I put together when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! Wow. And it had light in the dark. It was like had light in the dark parts to it. So when you had it lit, it, you know, when you shut the light off, it glow. Yeah, I I had a Godzilla monster uh, model. I had a Frankenstein model. I had a model of the mummy, Dracula. Cool. Let's see who was on. Oh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. That was my favorite. See, that's something like when I was a kid in my closet, I always thought um, the vampire and the werewolf, you know, Dracula, werewolf, and the mummy were in there waiting for me to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had a werewolf model too. No, I got all the monster models because I was big fan of monster movies. Oh, yeah. I love those things. See, that's another one we could do would be the the three creature movies. Oh, yeah. Like The Thing? Yeah, that would be a decent one to do. Oh, yeah. The, a look in the, uh, the, and the stories about the uh, John Carpenter version of people, uh, pe uh, people actually uh, getting so grossed out that they actually vomited in the theaters. Well, that kind of brings memories of the exorcist when it first came out oh boy we that one had people passing out in the theater and such wow that's like one movie that i watch like every couple of years <laughs> wow. can't imagine those people uh, uh how they feel now when they see that spider walk from down the stairs that she did yeah yeah oh gosh <laughs> We got that. Yeah, but that's been a animated like in uh, a few other movies, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of scary, the upside down walking. Yeah. It's kind of well, freaky. Didn't, uh, I, I pretty much quit watching wrestling, but uh, what their guy? Bray Wyatt? Yeah, he did didn't a few he do times. something like that? Yes, he did, yes. Scared the, <laughs> he scared the daylights out of people, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Got to remember, but you also got to remember when you're into pro wrestling, you got to really make sure your body is uh, back and everything else is flexible, including your neck. Yeah. Because of all the but damn I... moves that you're doing. If I were to get in a ring and my back and neck was sick, I'd be fucked. Yeah. But I just remember seeing that a couple of times, thinking to myself, "Hey, that's actually interesting." Because mm -hmm. I got the point that. It was never interesting anymore, so I quit watching about two, three years ago, completely. Um, I know. I just stopped. I've the only thing I've watched so far was either old NWA and um, some of the recent stuff the NWA has put out. Well, even though some of the stuff hasn't really tickled, tickled my sides. It's yeah, just been most have been documentaries, this and that, you know, podcasts of the wrestlers that they have on the side there. Like uh, the NWA World Champion Nick Aldis, he has a show called "What's Causing All This." If you get the term there, yeah. And I'm yeah, not really interested, and I'm just that's not really interested in Pac. We had so many uh, wrestlers doing podcasts, whether it's Colt Cabana, Steve Austin, Chris Jericho here and there. It's just you know. It gets a little, a little bit overdone, but then again, you know, this is how they earn money on the side there. Well, I grew up in the 60s, 70s, and 80s with wrestling, and having watched that, it's really hard to get into anything nowadays because it's just, it's just not the same. I know. I mean, I knew it was fake as a kid, but it was still interesting and it was still fun, and they they made it seem real. Exactly. So. I think what it was. I think I think the big mistake was um, when uh, John Stossel, you know, g 
got re- was when he did that report for the show 2020, which he was a part of at that time, the ABC News show. Um, yeah. I think what it was is that he was the one who helped expose the business. But the other person that was responsible was a cat named Eddie um, Mansfield. He was supposed to be a big upcoming wrestler with the WWF, but apparently what it was, it was not revealed Pat Patterson was the one who apparently got him fired because he wouldn't do no sexual favors for the guy. Apparently, you know, I Ooh. guess... Um, as a result of that, he wanted to get back at the WWF by revealing all its secrets, and it pissed off everybody, including Dr. D. David Schultz. You remember what happened when uh, Sasso asked Schultz that, you know, is wrestling fake? I believe it's fake. I believe it is. And uh, as you can see what happened, if you look on the footage, Stasso ended up with uh, getting smacked across his eardrums and ended up with permanent hearing, da- hearing damage. Yeah. And the funny thing was, the story was, Vince McMahon told him to do that. Mm, wow. But I guess what it was is that, but either way, you know, uh, Schultz got the screw job because he was soon let go after that. Yeah. But uh, when I grew up, we had guys like, well, I had, I, I got to see the original Fritz von Eric when he was, mm. oh, yeah. you know, because I got to see him then before he put his sons in the business got to see them too yeah and uh just there's just all kinds of guys that are just it was just kind of fun to watch and it's fun to watch with my grandfather because my grandfather believed it he thought every minute of it was real <laughs> and watching him do the reactions he would do was almost as entertaining as the show itself wow. <laughs> yeah know? i mean he would get incest he would sit there and he'd, you know, the bad guy would do something, and man, he would just almost come out of his chair. And I'm sitting <laughs> there going, "Hey, this is this is cooler than the wrestling." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> watching his reaction. Yeah, it's like, um, dude, it's like uh, it's still real to me. That kind of vibe there, most likely. Yeah, because well, back then, it, most people believed it. You know, that pretty much it was easy to figure out if you were really paying attention. Yeah. But uh, for instance, you know, a lot um, of people had some belief in it. Yeah, they believed that nope, it was real. They believed they believed it was all those uh, the hatred between those two was real. And the wrestlers back then make sure to keep that illusion as alive as possible. For instance, the heels would only ride with other heels, and the baby faces would do the same. You know, they had separate uh, locker rooms. Exactly. For the, yeah, they kept it real. They kept things. You know. At a pace there, they wanted to make sure that the audience believed it. One hundred and twenty percent, yeah. Except when yeah. Hacksaw Jim Duggins and the Sheik got caught riding in the convertible up to the one, and they got pulled over by the police, and they had cocaine on them and stuff. Weed, yes, and, I remember hearing you know, about that. Yes, I did. Yeah, but uh, nowadays everyone knows it's fi- fake. Yeah, I and mean, they, there ain't, there's nobody believes it nowadays. Yeah, and it, it I'm kinda, amazed they still have an audience. Yeah, but but then again, they like watching you know the whole thing, watching people go against one another. It's like to, it's about the same as a kind of like a, a violent soap opera, let alone the uh, Jerry Springer thing. There, <laughs> they well, love that's what people used to call it. It was an adult soap opera. Mm-hmm, yeah. The most violent, they called WrestleMania the first one, the most violent soap opera. I remember that in a magazine there. People like watching some sort of drama and a lot of uh, acrobat moves when you think about it there. Yeah, I first started watching wrestling back in uh, when when the Ganyas Mm -hmm. were wrestling. uh, Oh, that's uh, right. That's the AWA from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I started watching that uh, when the Ganyas, I don't know, I was probably like six. Vern and Greg, right? Yep. Right. Yeah, I remember that too. So I remember seeing that they were on ESPN for a while there. Same night as the WWF Tuesday night, uh, I guess it was the primetime wrestling. Yeah, and it, it actually that's where we know him as Hulk Hogan, but Terry Bollea got his start was up there. Mm-hmm, yes. Yep. Roddy Piper. Yeah, well, that's, that's what that's... I used to watch every Saturday morning. Was uh, I forgot the name? Was it NWA or A A E W? That's what it was. Well, A W A or A W A. Yeah, yeah. 
when Aiden. I was a kid, every Saturday we'd watch it and Hulk Hogan, the Sheik, yep. you know, um, Roddy Roddy Piper. Mm-hmm. Well, Roddy um, Piper, I think, was in uh, still with the NWA, I think it was, um, prior to joining the WWF. I think, I forgot, I, I remember seeing a clip from uh, 1977, and he was supposed to go after this guy named Tank App, not Tank Patton, you know. And I guess, um, believe it or not, years later, way back when I was a wee kid, there was this one of those TV stations that ran out somewhere from long distance. You would get it on, what was it, the VHF or UHF there? I think it was called there where you get the uh, stations from either Canada or elsewhere, other states. Yeah. i not sure. But I know I, a lot of what I saw was the Texas wrestling and there was a couple of them from Louisiana Mid-South uh, I don't remember the names of the others but I saw a lot of those and that's where I saw like Jerry Lawler in his early career people of that nature Ric Flair well, you know, wow it's something there yeah Ric Flair you know Roddy Piper all those guys you know and I remember when in the the roasting program that I used to watch, there was this one annoying guy up there, and I realized when I think about it, that was Roddy Piper. Yeah, well, he's quite a character. I mean, he was somebody that that was enjoyable just because he was an interesting character. That's what led me out to watching it. There was that show Piper's Pity used to do with the uh, WWF. So sad it was only for about a couple of minutes there. He had to go through a half hour of wrestling this guy, that guy, the wrestling that guy just to get to a Piper's Pit there. Yeah. One of the wrestlers I used to like was uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggins because he'd always come in stomping with a 2 by 4 and be like, yep. Ah! Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, the guys back then were characters, and they were they were more interesting because they were characters. Exactly. And then, then yeah, of course, the WWF uh, took it a little bit too far when they had to make every wrestler that they uh, that they got a hold of into a character like um like a comic book character because they well, actually did... a ridiculous character in a lot of cases. Oh my okay, gosh! Uh, the, we were talking. I think we were talking about it, putting uh, polka dots on the trunks of Dusty Rhodes' the American Dream. Oh, they really messed him up. Right, exactly there. And the, and he was the, great in Mid South and Crockett and all of that, but when he ended up with the WWF, it was almost like they were trying to make fun of him. Yeah, exactly. That's a that's a thing. And I think one of the mo- most stupidest things out there was. Um, but then again, I don't know if the gold. You, I think you mentioned that the Gold Dust character was uh, Dustin Rhodes' idea. I think it was. I believe so. Yeah, because I know uh, Cody, he was for a while Stardust, you know, and he hated that gimmick to the full T there. Yeah. And now for I understand, he has to go, now he's with AEW, but he has to just go by the name Cody. Because apparently, uh, I guess, so for some stupid reason, the WWE is not allowing them to have his last name. Even though Which he's is kind of bizarre. Which is because, you know, even though he's had that name for how many years, he was involved with the Ring of Honor. They had no issue with using that name there. So I don't know why they're fronting about it now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the thing, and I don't, oh, did you hear about this? Page? You know, apparently what it was is that the WWE is now uh, taking away some of their uh, roster's Twitter uh no Twitch. When I'm talking about Twitch uh, streams, there. Well, my take on that is, if it got set up by WWE, they can do that. But if it's their own, if it's the wrestlers' personal accounts, they're treading on some dangerous legal ground on that one. Yeah. I know Paige, for instance, she threw a very she was extremely heartbroken and pissed off because that's how she was able to earn a earn a few bucks there. Because remember, she's unable to wrestle now because of what happened to her neck. Right. So she was like nearly in tears because she just simply said, I cannot deal with this company no more. So we don't know if she's going to quit or something like that, you know. But still, you know, you know, come on. 
Paige needs to earn a buck. She needs to um, earn some money, you know. And Twitch right now is the only thing that she has for the time being, let alone a YouTube uh, streams there, even though we have yet to even see her do any streams on YouTube. But probably that's the route that she can do right now because, as you know, she cannot wrestle. She even tries right. her neck be busting. And she'd be a complete goner. God, that's that sucks. Yeah, it's just you know, it's like what the fuck, you know? Like, is it like the WWE trying to grasp control over everything or what? You think they'd have some type of settlement, or you know, something like a package that they could give her? I or mean, like, you know, McMahon or, is pretty rich. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or but least... again, my personal thing is if if it's something WWE starting, it's under their umbrella. They have that right. But if that's their own personal channel, they really don't have the right to step in and take it. That's some very dangerous legal ground that I think they would lose. Yeah. And not only the respect they would lose of the fans who watches those streams. I mean, like, people are giving their Vince McMahon shit for allowing the WWE created to be so crappy as it is right now for how many years? I mean, right. it, it can it kind of help but feel bad for Joe Cronin because uh, he has to watch that show and give it to reviews soon afterwards. And he usually, most of the time, he says it sucks. You know, this show blows or anything like that. The creative ain't worth a shit. You know, I cannot count how many times Joe Cronin has uh, went off on Vix McMahon. You know, for allowing such a shitty product to be broadcasted. Well, it's funny because people talk about how the other one was at AEW mm -hmm. is so yes. much better. But oh, they are. Yeah. the thing is, it's still not as good as wrestling used to be. Yeah. It's just still trash, but just a higher form of trash, I guess you'd say. Not really. But at least, however, the people, the people out there who are watching it, they're... They are in absolute uh, having fun because, you know, when they were still filming in arenas and venues up there where they had that dynamite show going on, you know, there were a lot of people singing along to Chris Jericho's theme song. There were people shouting out, you sick fuck, you sick fuck, this is awesome, this is awesome. There was this one thing at that couple of clips where they had an AEW event in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas. I... Gosh, they had this thing where everybody was stone cold stunning this Sean Spears guy there. Everybody, including Aubrey Edwards, who won to see um, prominent top female referees in AEW. There, she's hmm. getting like she's getting a lot of notice there. People are shouting, "Aubrey, stun him!" Aubrey stun him and what she did, <laughs> she which and what she did, and everybody was screaming, "Yeah, Aubrey, Aubrey, Aubrey!" It's definitely a check it out, you know. Just type in AEW Corpus Christi, and you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> it is a trip to be in, uh, a trip to watch there, and it must have been around Christmas time because um, Jody Jelana, I guess his his last name is pronounced. He was dressed. Uh, in a Santa Claus outfit while he was a wrestling there. They pulled out this one guy that looked that was dressed as Jesus. Hmm. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> it's like oh and I, I guess at the every event they had this little get together, I guess it was, you know, they uh shout out some people and they do some crazy things in the ring afterwards. And the thing about AEW is that, you know, like uh, Cody Rhodes said, this is the Ellis Island of uh, pro wrestling. You can uh, be your own person. You have a lot more creative freedom. Whereas the WWE, you're like, uh, you're handed some scripts, handed them things to write, and you're told to say this and say that. And that doesn't make it fun at all. And have the promos suck there in WWE, let alone the storylines. Yeah. Well, like I said, I quit watching. Oh gosh, it's been at least three years. No, I, I've it's been, been watching... probably ten for me. No. Well, I, I had given up when w, w, WCW went away. Yeah. And I started watching for a little while, and then I'm not liking this, and quit watching, 
and then I gave it another chance about three years ago, four years ago. Mm-hmm. Watched it for a little while. That's why I know about Bray Wyatt. And he was the only interesting thing worth watching. Everything else was kind of like dull. And uh, when they started messing with him, I thought, okay, uh, this isn't worth watching. And I just quit. Yeah. Yeah. I stopped a long time ago. It was just kind of sad because after, when I moved to Texas, we didn't have no. Uh, we only had regular TV at the house that um, I was staying at that time prior to moving here. So when I finally got to see Raw for the first time in how many years, I was like, who are these people? Yeah. Why is everybody and, boring? And basically the only way I kind of even keep up with it now is I'll occasionally watch Cronin's show Yeah. to see what the heck is going on, and then I'll listen to it for a while and go, mm-hmm. eh, didn't miss anything. Not much either. I basically, I guess, listen just to see if anything's changed. Which, uh, sadly, it doesn't seem to be. You know, I guess we could. I guess we could all sum it well, up. Well, I'm Go ahead. And I listen to some of Vince Russo's stuff because, you know, it, it's interesting. I don't know if you have listened to anything he does or not. I have it. I have a couple of times. Yeah, I know he has this uh, show called uh, Full Moon Attitude, where he allows people to take to call in and ask some questions and talk about just about everything including wrestling yeah but uh, I basically he's got several shows I like to watch one of them's called uh, Castrating the Marks yes I heard of on, that yes it's on his pay but it is an absolute fun thing to watch because he sits there and he basically makes fun of these guys that that read write and eat wrestling all the time the dirt sheet writers Yes. And some of the stupid stuff they say. And he uses their words. He doesn't put anything else in it. Yep. And that one's fun to watch. And then he does another thing on one of his other channels with uh, Stevie Richards and Ben Hameen yeah. called Master Shoot Theater that uh, basically is, is a little parody on Vince McMahon. Right. And it's absolutely funny to watch that show. I mean, I- it is incredibly funny i know he's been doing a lot of aew view and watching as well while he watches live reaction a couple of times to a couple of pay-per-views where there's a wwe and uh, aew aew there so uh, yeah. a couple of times he has done that i'm i'm i kind of miss that one of his old shows there called uh what was it called oh bucket full of chicken necks where he goes off on what's going on in politics pop culture and everything else I think he brought that one back I hope so yeah because I I gotta see it on his YouTube chain channel there because um, I miss watching that I called yeah. it on the show one time the full moon attitude uh huh yeah I called in you know asked him you know he was asking about um you know how it is in Texas with the COVID nineteen going on. He has mentioned that it was uh, rising up again at that time when I called, which was a couple months back. And I asked him if he was still writing for the WWE, uh, what kind of approach would he give the the roster? He would go, um, and he did say mention about possibly you know, coming up with storylines that's related to the events at that time, whether it's the, the George Floyd situation, the COVID-19, the lockdown, and everything else. That's what he would have um, came or came up with if he was still the writer. Yeah. Something what you, a little more current than what they do. Yeah. And by the way, would, wouldn't you agree that possibly you know, AEW and uh, Impact Wrestling should uh, res- do the same thing WWE doing this turns with this uh, Thunderdome thing there where people can watch the events from their home and be uh, shown on the little um, squares there and there were supposed to be seats? It would probably make it more interesting. Yeah, it would because AEW needs to do that. I know a Tony Khan, I think he's a billionaire himself, I guess. Uh, that's what I understand. I Like I said, I don't know much about any of that. No. I don't even think I've seen an AEW episode. Oh, I have a couple of times in the past. You know, I was really, I made a video about it being geeked up to, you know, check it out there. I know the NWA won't be able to because, you know, it's not that big of a company there. Right. Which is sad oh, because, yeah. you know, the only thing I've been seeing so far from that, uh, 
from that company was just these uh, documentaries between this rivalry, that rivalry, and or these other podcast shows or events from a couple of years back, these wrestling events. Yeah, sometimes the documentaries are fun to watch because I know that around here, generally where I am, they used to have a venue called the Sportatorium in Fort Worth that uh, hosted wrestling on a regular basis, especially when the Von Eric boys were there. Uh-huh. Which, by the way, that story is a sad one. Yeah. There's a Von Eric's. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yes. One by one by one, sadly. It's like you wonder if that family was cursed or not, something. I think the only one still alive is Kevin, and I'm not even sure about that. Mm. Uh, I think he lives in Hawaii now. Oh. But uh, I think he's the only one left. The rest of them, like you said, one by one. Passed away from this reason or that reason. I don't know what's... Well, uh, the first one passed away due to some kind of stomach thing over in Japan. Yeah. Uh, David. And then the next one, and I don't remember the order. Well, the the next three killed themselves. Wow. Remember hearing about that as well. I think one of them was later known as the Texas Tornado. And it was Gary yeah. Von Eric that was? Gary Von Eric, right. That's kind of funny. You know, do us a, you know, one of the reasons why I look, kind of look down on the WWE is because they always make it change your character. Then your name right. and such. You know, like, the geez, they could have, he just been a Kerry Von Eric no matter what. But they prefer to call him the Texas Tornado. And the, one of the most stupidest gimmick they ever came up with was Terry Taylor, the Red Roost. The rooster, him going cock a doo 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 with this little red stripe sticking up in on his head there. Come on, give us a break. Yeah, they're pretty famous for dumb gimmicks. But... And one of the worst ones to me was the uh, one man game becoming Akeem, the Prince of Africa. A white man they're doing all this stupid little hand movements and stuff while wearing African clothing. Give us a break. That was obviously to capitalize on the uh, Coming to America movie, which was a big at that time there. But let's uh, have a white guy so we could get the, you know, all the blacks riled up and uh, have uh, Saba Simba, a.k.a. Tony Atlas, Mr. USA, go on there and uh, start up a feud with him, saying, we will see who the true African prince is, blah, blah, blah. You know, but you get the idea where we're going to go for this here. I don't think that a feud ever emerged or is not. Yeah, I think something happened with, I believe, Tony Atlas, where he wasn't there anymore, but I'm not sure. Yeah, most likely. Well, like it, I was said, I, brief. it was brief, folks. Yeah, I don't uh, know much about a lot of the stories. Cause just, Well, to be honest, I'm not even interested. Yeah. I just know what I hear. Yeah, you know? a lot of... A lot of the things we hear just hey, have not been that good, bottom line. Yeah, and it's just not worth my time and effort to go look any of it up. Yeah, I know, I couldn't agree. It's like, I've been really watching the AEW for a long while myself, you know, because I've been um, busy doing other things. You know, like, let's say, it's been a while since I did a music stream. I've been thinking about doing that possibly sometime this week there, but I'm trying to find the sources what I can to do so where it's techno ambient or a slow dub or something like that there <clears throat> I gotta start looking at that man well, yeah. I guess I guess we've covered everything that we wanted to cover plus yeah I did yeah we had a good, pretty good show there I think it's probably, uh, probably time to wrap it up I guess it is yeah, I think we've been on a little over an hour. And... <laughs> yeah, a lot more than an hour, actually. You know, And most likely, uh, when we get done, I'm going to compile all the, the two uh, sections we have into one. No, but definitely no doubt, and re-upload this sucker there. Okay. And one of these days, I'll give you the list of what I'm missing on my channel. All right, there. All right. And, and we'll uh, figure out a way to get it there. All right, so, um, and I'm going to try to keep looking for that Manda 2 um, movie there on YouTube or um, somewhere else. Remember, it's a Movies 25 or something like that, if it's still listed on there. Because I don't think, uh, most of those um, channels up there usually um, show current movies, I guess it is. 
but I'll keep it trying there here and there. So um, okay. I guess so. But um, I was so uh, what other than the Manitou? Did you still what, what movie did you want to do in this place? If I'm unable to find it. Oh, let me kind of think about it, and I can tell you tomorrow or Wednesday. All right, got you there. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I really, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything that I would have thought you might have seen. Because mm -hmm. I really want to do one that you've seen. Yeah. Uh, there was this one movie I remember seeing called Laser Blast around 1978 there. Uh, it was a, a kind of, it featured kind of like the claymation uh Aliens at the same kind that uh, Ray Harryhausen did. I don't know if he was involved in it, but um, no, 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 it would have been it would, listed. It would have been. It was a very uh, low budget movie. There, I have to explain uh, about to look it up again and I explain the whole storyline here. Yeah, I haven't seen it, so uh, I I remember seeing it one time. I thought it was going to be um, at that time. You know, I was big on science fiction and everything else. You know thanks to the first Star Wars there. I was uh, right. scoping up everything kind of science fiction at that time, including um, Battlestar the Galactica, the original, and uh, right. of course, you know, the original Flash Gordon black and white series. Yeah. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Definitely got to give that movie a notch. Yeah, that, that one was a good movie, actually. Yeah, absolutely, it was. All right, so I guess that'll be it for today, I guess. Okay. And, um, Sounds good. Okay, all right. Um, all right. Super Bowl, Minnesota Super Bowl 100, we thank you for being on with us today. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Arknolia, Arknolia and uh, Dr. Brown, for having me. All right, thanks for that. We got to, you know, definitely, we got to hook up again uh, this week there. Of course, uh, we will on uh, Real as Fuck TV as well. Yeah, sorry I didn't contribute as much. There's just some things I didn't really know, you know, you guys are talking about, so. All right. I just well, sat fine. on the it's side. It's okay, dude. It's all right. All right. All right. All right, so um, tomorrow night we will continue our discussion on the Rolling Stones on our music memories, you know, discussion there. And on Wednesday we'll continue the um, Twilight Zone discussion there. And uh, I guess on Thursday we'll take a look at the Kings. Right. And I guess um, well, Friday's we'll... up in the air yet. Yes, exactly. I got a couple of suggestions of mine as one of them I mentioned earlier, but we'll let uh, Ark know. Yeah, come up with some stuff there we can discuss for our. I guess we could probably call it movie memories, if you want to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I've been calling it movie madness, but. It, it, you know what? That's a better I, that's that's a better idea because we could discuss good movies, bad movies, movies that are con that cause a lot of controversy and everything else. Yeah, just kind of go into all kinds of topics. All right, there. Yeah, that's a better suggestion. I like that definitely. All right. Oh. All right. There. Okay, I guess we're done, and we'll see everybody. Hopefully, tomorrow we'll see everybody. Absolutely. Here, um, it'll be uh, Arknoy and the Doctor, um, Monday through Friday, with the exception of Thursday. It'll be at 7 um, p.m. Eastern Time, except for Thursday, 6 p.m., because, you know, I might stint with Real Sluck TV there. Right. And um, let get the page loaded up here I gotta, so we can end this show here. It takes a long time. And one of the thing, first things I'm going to do is, you know, fucking clean this damn computer. Definitely, there's a lot. I think there's a lot of bugs up here that um, need to be uh, kicked out. All right. All righty then. All right, you guys have a good one. All right. All, all right. right. We'll talk uh, to everybody later. All right, and to you as well, Silver Wall Hunter. Have a good one. Is he already gone? I think so. Yeah. All right. There we go. Like I said, I have to uh, work on re-upping and loading uh, the episode, getting uh, part one and part two together there and make it into one. Use the same thumbnail. All right, so hopefully that would, would definitely do that. I'll probably uh, do this right now. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you go, and I will talk to you tomorrow about the same time. Yeah, like I said, uh, 
just I'll be ready. Just give me a call whenever you're ready. Okay. Or I can then. send you a little note to know or whatever you want to do. Okay there. All right. All right. You have a good one. All right. Bye bye. Talk to you later. Bye bye. bye.